Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is a little bit different for us, but we're super excited to start this project. We're gonna be building a platform bed, floating bed. The two are gonna be kind of fused together. We have some downtime with our main projects that we're working on, and I don't have a bed, so, or I have a bed, but just not a bed frame. So we're gonna build a custom bed frame, because if you can build the materials and do it yourself, then why not, right? What we've got over here, is we've got some super cheap framing lumber and I know you guys might be skept skeptical about it but just trust us um, we have 12 two by sixes that are eight feet long over here we've got eight slats for the bed to sit on to support it we've got eight slats they're gonna be one by fours eight feet long and then back here we've got two four by eight sheets of masonite that we picked up this was all about $95 for us where we live with the sales tax and everything included. So it might be a little different where you guys live, but all of this material was about $95 for us. Um, that's obviously not including the tools that we're gonna use, but if you're gonna pick up the lumber, that's what it's gonna be. So the bed is gonna be made up of two pieces. It's gonna be the top frame, which is gonna be the platform piece of the bed. It's gonna be the part that the mattress sits on, and then underneath is going to be the base that kind of creates that floating effect that we're looking for. So we're actually gonna work on the top first. That way we have a good reference point when we go towards the bottom piece. So we've got all of our lumber, we've got our measurements. I'm actually gonna throw them up on the screen as we're making our cuts so you guys can see and follow along with us. But we're running out of daylight, so let's get these cuts started. Hey gang, so we're gonna pre-drill all our holes in our two by sixes. And we're gonna mark them because we want all the screws to look like they're even. We could do it freehand, but this is much better. So we wanna be three quarters of an inch in from the edge. So I set my combination square at three quarters of an inch. And then I'm just gonna do that. And I already did this one. So let's go down here to the other end. And you don't need a combination square right. to achieve this. It just saves you a lot of measuring. Right. Now we want the screw to be an inch from this edge, so I'm gonna change it to an inch. Right there. And then we just hit them all. One, two, three, four. And then we'll eyeball the middle. You sure? <laughs> I can get my micrometer out. <laughs> I'll make sure I we're... think we'll be okay. <laughs> and you could use a regular tape measure for this. Yep. And you get the same result. This will just save you a little bit of time. And that combination square is not actually too expensive if you wanted to pick one up. Yeah, this is actually a. This is a Starrett hmm. that I've had for a long time. Right. We could eyeball the middle hole, but we're measuring everything else, so we're going to measure it. So half of. Five and a half is two and three quarters. And what's five and a half? The width of this. Sweet. Yeah, so you, you could, see we just use a tape measure, you could also adjust this to two and three quarter. Sure. And the beauty of this is there's no error, you, you uh, eliminate the risk of an error. Right. By leaving the tape measure wrong. And if you're gonna be wrong you want to do it consistently so it looks that's how we do things. intentional we're consistently wrong <laughs> all right let's drill those cool let's pre-drill them see if we didn't pre-drill this would split right yeah there. you want to pre-drill when you're working on the ends of the boards boom sweet that's 18 holes now we're ready to assemble the base and to assemble the base, we're just gonna be using these grip right construction screws, three inches, um, nothing crazy. And they're good for budget builds. Yep. Guys, so we're down here on the concrete and assembling on concrete is rough because a lot of the times it's uneven and a lot of the times it's slopes. So what we've done is we've taken our scrap one by fours and we've kind of laid them below our pieces where we're gonna be securing the screws. That way it gives us more of a level playing field essentially. So we're just gonna go ahead and drive these in and secure this puppy, huh? Yep.
All right, so we've got our frame assembled. Now we're gonna go ahead and again, using the one by four scraps to make everything flush and give us a better chance against this concrete, we're gonna put those underneath our middle stretcher and we're gonna go ahead and secure this puppy in there. This board has a little bit of a twist in it and I can't get it square by hand. So we're gonna run this screw in the bottom as a pivot point, and then we're going to put this clamp on it, and that'll give me plenty of leverage to pull that board square to this one. Sweet, let's get that twist out and All secure right. it. Woo. All right, so we've got our frame assembled. This is going to be the top piece, pretty fast and pretty easy. So now we're gonna lay the slats out across the top, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and pre-drill them. We know that our, our framing lumber, our two by sixes right here are gonna be an inch and a half wide. So we're coming to the slats and just marking them at three quarters of an inch all the way around with the combination square. And that's gonna be where our two screws are gonna go. So we're marking them out and then we're gonna go three quarters on both sides right there. So it's just three quarters all the way around. Yep. And then we're just going to pre-drill them all super quick and install them. So let's get these pre-drilled real quick. This slat attached with two screws and this one attached. So we have six more to attach. That means seven spaces. So we just shoved them all down there. And we're gonna measure this distance. We're gonna 55. call it 55. And we're gonna divide that by seven and cut two blocks that length. And that'll be our spacer. We don't have to measure anything. So we'll use our phone and just divide 55 by seven, which is We'll figure it out. Eight. Yeah, yeah, almost. Right. And then we're gonna cut the spacer blocks and use those to Make all of the gaps even, even though you could eyeball it, but that's how the stud pack does it. We want it to look pretty, even yeah, though no and, one's going to see it. And anytime you can take the tape measure out of it, do it. Right. Yeah. All right. So 55 divided by 7. 7.85. So we'll call it 7 and 7 eighths. Sure. 7 eighths of an inch would be 8.25. Right. So we're a couple thousandths off. I think we can deal with that. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys, so we've got our two spacer blocks at seven and seven eighths. We've got one on this end and we've got one over there. And we're just gonna go ahead and lay them out, use the spacer blocks, sink them with just a couple of screws. We're not gonna fully secure it yet, just in case. And uh, we're just gonna make sure everything looks nice and secures nice. And once it's all done and laid out, then we'll go ahead and sink the rest. But that's the setup, so let's go ahead and get these all knocked out. So that's all of them down with our spacer block, but we only have two screws in each one. So we got to secure it for real this time. Now that we know the spacing is good and everything looks good. Yep. So we're just going to go around and sink the rest of them. Well, we got this part of the bed all complete. The slats are all attached with all the screws. So now it's time to attach this two by six right here, which will make the, the lip. Yeah, so the, just the mattress is gonna be on top and this is gonna be around the mattress. Right. And so we decided that we want this edge right here to be an inch inbound of that. And so this is an inch and a half plus the one inch is two and a half inches. So I set my square for two and a half inches, made a mark there, and I made a mark here. And the distance from the headboard to here will be the short point of, the, of this miter. And we can pull our, all our measurements off of these. Right, it'll make sense when we start cutting. Yeah, but again, I'm using this, and I got a mark there. So you can see, line that up with those marks and that's where we're going to attach it 
and we're going to come underneath here with some screws to attach this to the to frame this part. We're going through the slats. Right, and it'll be super strong and you won't see any screws. Alrighty guys, so we have our two sides mitered. They turned out beautifully. And again, if you don't have a miter saw, you can always use a circular saw or even a handheld saw. Um, you might not get as clean of a, a result, but it can be done. We're gonna go ahead, put these up on the saw horses like we've done here so we have access underneath to screw them. And so what dad's doing is he's going around with a combination square and he's marking, how, how deep are you right now? I'm at one and three quarters. All right, so he's going around and marking them all at one and three quarters. And what that's gonna allow us to do is get far enough away from this screw so that we don't split it when we come up from underneath to secure this guy, because that's how we're doing it. We're going through the slat. So this is just to let us know that when we pre-drill our holes, it's essentially just kind of like a safety barrier so we don't get anywhere near these screws just to be sure that it doesn't split. Do you want me to go at a little bit of an angle? A little bit of an angle, yeah. I say a little bit, I say a little bit more maybe. Yeah, that's good, I think. Boom. And we're just lining it up with these. Yeah, we're just using our screws that we already have down as a reference. So we're gonna get all these pre-drilled and we'll see you guys when it's all done. We got all the holes pre-drilled. You can see here, they're all pre-drilled at a kind of a slight angle. But first we wanted to talk to you about keeping your bed frame square. So what are we doing? So before we put the slats on and we had this, this frame made, we check diagonals. It's 105 and a half, right to here. Yep. And then we check that one. And when they're the same, it's square. This was a rectangle, so if the diagonals are the same, then this, the corners are 90 degrees. Right. And, so. And we're we're within a quarter inch. Yeah, less than that. Yeah. yeah. So we're pretty square, but we just wanted to show you guys that, just so you don't have a lopsided bed. Cool, so let's go ahead and secure these two lips. Now we're ready to attach those. Yeah, so we're gonna attach them from the bottom and then we'll use the two secured lips to get our final measurement for the front lip. That way we can cut it to fit. So let's go ahead and secure these down real quick. Cool. So I secured the end and now I'm gonna secure the other end. That way I don't have to worry about it shifting and not being on our marks. And then we'll go ahead and secure everything else in the middle. starting to look like a bed right there that's awesome but we are racing against the clock the sun is going down we've got a beautiful sunset and now we just gotta cut this thing to what 70 71 and 7 16th 71 and 7 16th that's what we want for a tight miter so we're gonna go ahead and miter both edges and and install this thing yep. let's get these cut you might have to sleep outside tonight if we don't finish it <laughs> hey, at least we got a place <laughs> let's get it Alrighty guys, so the miters are cut and it looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna go ahead and pre-drill and secure it down. Um, we cut it a little long and then just kept shaving material off because you can always take off, but you can't add more wood. So it fits really good. And if you wanna take another approach and if it's a little long, instead of trying to risk getting another perfect miter, you can always leave this loose, only secure it up there. Leave this loose and then just bring this piece out a little bit and have it floating because you'll never be able to tell that this isn't perfectly 90 degrees right there. Um, and it'll match up really nice as well. So that's another little trick. So let's go ahead and pre-drill into yep. the slat. And look at the grain. It looks like the grain is, is matched. It looks See, like it's one piece of wood. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. We planned it that way. Right. All right, let's drill these holes. All right, let's get them pre-drilled and let's secure that lip and then we'll build the bottom frame and uh, we'll probably be running out of light right around that time. There you have it guys, a, a sick platform bed. Everything is square, 
level, secured, super strong, everything you want. Yeah, we'll pick, and we'll, we'll put a plate under there to pull these miters together. Right, right there. Little mending plate. Yeah. Sure. Now we got to build this bottom piece. And that was what? Not even two hours. Not even two hours. Yeah. Not even two hours, and not even a hundred bucks. Right. Beautiful. And it it really does look good. I'm all, I'm kind of blown away a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's take those last two by sixes and build the bottom box that it's going to be sitting on top of. All right. Let's build it real quick. All right. And as for the bottom base of the bed, we have two cuts that we're making. We've got two pieces at 68 inches and two pieces at 41 and a half inches. So these are already cut and now we're just gonna go ahead and mark them and pre-drill and assemble it just like we did earlier on in the video. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing put together real quick and see how she fits up. So the sun beat us today. Um, we have to come back tomorrow and finish this up. So tomorrow what we're gonna be addressing is this wobbly. It's so wobbly. If you roll out of bed, it's gonna fling you across the room. So in order to prevent that, we actually have to put some more two by sixes um, underneath this slat. So we have a point of connection it, from the bottom frame to the top frame right here. So we just have to make it a little more sturdy, but we're gonna go ahead and do that tomorrow. So we'll see you guys then. Alrighty guys, it is the next day here with the bed build. And if you guys remember at the end of last night when time ran out on us, we were about to cut the two by sixes for the braces that are gonna be underneath the slat to support the bed to keep it from wobbling. So if you'll come over here to the miter saw with me, you can see that we've got this last two by six and we're actually gonna go ahead and cut this end off. You can see that this is kind of garbage right here, um, especially since we're coming in this way with the screws, that's how we're gonna be attaching it. We're going through into the end grain. So we don't want all this. So we're just gonna go ahead and chop that off and make our measurement from this end, this nice clean edge. So uh, what, what's our measurement? 30 and a half. Okay, so we're gonna cut this off and then hit 30 and a half uh, twice. Hey gang, the purpose of these blocks we're installing is to make up the difference between this gap here on the platform and the base. So let me, let me show you. So this is 71 inches. The base is 71 inches. Yep. And then that's the head of the bed where a headboard would go and then we're 71 inches to this line. So this block is on that line. So just imagine that this is, is the base. You see, it's gonna go like that. So the base is gonna support this very well. Yep, and, and we're gonna we, secure it. And we can connect them together. So we're all drilled and uh, let's put the screws in. Cool. We took the bed off of the saw horses and we put it on the ground on the base. So what we're gonna do, the plan is to attach this part of the bed to the base with these blocks. We wanna do that first because this block will help us position this one. We'll put this in first here, we'll screw it into here, and then we'll screw it into this block, and then we'll put these in. That way this face will be perfectly flush right here. Right. So let's drill all these first. Okay. And we got a little... We got a little setup going. Yep. So Jordan didn't want me to mark all the blocks. So I told him there's a little trick we can do. So I just marked this one. Okay. And there we go. It's not perfect, but... It doesn't have to be. For these blocks, it's fine. Right. And so we're just going to go ahead and get all these drilled and then secure the base to the top. Almost done. <laughs> but before we secure everything in place with the two by sixes on the inside, securing the top to the bottom, we have to get everything lined up to make sure that the bed, the top piece is centered over the bottom piece. So what we've done is we've measured both of these distances right here. We've measured the bottom and the top. We actually have our distances right here. So the top is 65 and a half. Divide that by two comes out to 32 and three quarters. And the bottom is 41 and a half. Divide that by two is 20 and three quarters. So we've gone ahead. So this line. Yep, that left line. line and that line. And so, so we just gotta line those up. Those are our centers. So when they're lined up. When they're lined right up, there. We're, we're good. Yeah, so how come this line is off, bud? How come that's off right there? 
Shouldn't the screws be in the middle? The screws should be in the middle, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and say that that's a bad measurement on your yeah, part. Screwed up, yeah. <laughs> these, these tape measures that have the uh, the eighths on them, yeah, they they just there's a lot of business on there. There's a lot of right. Yeah. There. So, all right, so let's go ahead and, and screw these two by sixes in. All right. Get torque screws. Yeah. Big time saver. Yeah, definitely want torque bit. Cool. So we got those two in. That looks awesome. Let's see if our lines match up. They do perfectly. And so now we're just gonna head on over to the, the, the front of the bed and do the same thing before we secure the two by sixes to the actual top frame. Yeah. We really can't put a line there. So, so this should be a foot and it is. See that? Right on it. We plan on the foot overhang. Yep. So I'm just gonna bring my tape down here. And line this up at a foot. Checking for a foot on that side. Beautiful. You got it? Beautiful. All right. The screws are behind you. Cool, so we're gonna go ahead and screw these two blocks into these two by sixes right here. And uh, we'll update you guys when it's all finished. But we got them sunk. They look great. And uh, this piece, this two by six is pulled tight up against this, nice and flat. Let's see if I can reach underneath here. Yeah, you guys can see it's nice and flush right there. It looks awesome. So now we're just gonna go ahead and install our second piece. But before that, we gotta skewer these in, right? All right, guys, so we had to use the hammer to hit that two by six in, but it was really good because securing this block before gave us a really good backer piece to kind of hit into. Yep. So now you know you're not overextended and you guys can see that right there. It looks real good. I mean, it's flush and everything's ready. So we just got two more screws to sink. Let's get it. Let's put those two, three here, Yep. three there, and then we'll give it a, a flip test. Beautiful toenail, Dad. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Toe screw. Toe screw. Did I say nail? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Sweet. So now we should be able to stand on this. It's tilting a little bit, but once you get the mattress on there, I mean, that thing is like pretty heavy. Yep. And you would never stand on that. Nope. We're it's not going to be doing balancing acts on the lip. You're going to sit here. Yep. And it's not tilting. Tie your shoes. Yeah, it's not tilting at all when you're sitting on it. It's fine. Super, super sturdy. And we use our straps for this. Yeah, those right? are two by six straps. Right. So you can look look over here. That's that's our straps. So yep. We made really that easy. plywood. We that plywood came from another project, right. but everything else is just scraps. So the final thing that we have to do to get the bed ready before the finishing process is to cut that masonite in the back and lay it on top. So let's go ahead and cut that real quick. This masonite. Sawdust is pretty fine. Well, <laughs> that's never happened before. <laughs> this masonite sawdust is pretty fine. What the heck? <laughs> I've used these my whole life, and two in a row pop right there. <laughs> okay, I tried. I tried to be safe. So I have a track saw. If you don't, the home centers can cut this for you on their panel saw. Yeah, just ask an employee. Yep. So here we go. So we just got the masonite cut to length and now we're gonna cut it to width. We're actually gonna cut the sheets equal sizes. That way we have two sheets that are equal in case we wanna move it in the future. That way we're not moving a big four by eight piece and then a small piece. It's just thinking down the road. So we've got our measurement. We're gonna go about 30 and an eighth on both of them. So we're just gonna make one cut. So let's uh, rip this sucker and see how she fits up. Woo! That's sweet. 
All right, guys, so the assembly of the bed is complete. The bed itself is complete, but I'm not using the word finish because we still have to actually finish the bed, which means we have to sand it, stain it, and uh, put some poly on it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that process. But before I can get jump started on that, I'm actually gonna remove the edges. So these three pieces on the edge, I'm gonna remove them so I can sand and finish the entire board and go ahead and access the bottom here. So let's get all these screws removed so we can access the whole board. Alrighty guys, so it's time for everybody's favorite part, the sanding. I've got my orbital sander here. We're gonna start with an 80 grit. We're gonna work our way up through 120. And then finally, we're gonna hit uh, 220. And we're starting with 80, because since this is framing lumber, we wanna be pretty aggressive with it on the first pass to get all the, all the blemishes and whatnot out of the way. So I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna throw it in a time-lapse mode, listen to some music, and uh, get the sanding done. So we'll see you guys when it's all completed. Alrighty guys, we just got our first lip edge completely sanded down with some 80 grit and it was pretty aggressive like I said to kind of knock off a lot of those blemishes but I think a lot of people have a misconception about pine wood in general. Um, they think it's kind of like a low grade, you know, shouldn't use it if it's built out of pine ugh, kind of attitude and I mean pine is a beautiful wood and it stains really well and I think it just kind of gets a bad rep and if you sand it and you prep it nice, I think it comes out beautifully and you can already tell just from these two boards that I have side by side what a difference even one pass with a sander can make. I mean, it really starts to reveal how awesome this pine wood is. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of it sanded, which includes the entire base and these two lip edges. I'm going to go ahead and sand them. We got to go three sanding passes with three different grits. It's going to take me a little bit. So I'm going to put the music in and I'm going to get it done and I'll see you guys then. And there we go, guys. We have completely sanded all of the edges that will be stained and that will be shown on the final product. And if I get in close, you guys can really see just what a difference it makes. I mean, it's a beautiful board. The grain is beautiful and the stain's really gonna help it to pop. I can't wait to get all these poly coats on and whatnot. So the next step is to completely vacuum this thing. We wanna free it of any dust and debris on there. So we're gonna go ahead and use the shop vac with a little bristle brush. And we're gonna go ahead and just vacuum everything and get as much dust off as possible. So let's get it done real quick. All right, guys, so everything is sanded. It's super smooth. It is. Um, it just feels amazing, and it looks amazing, and we couldn't be more thrilled with how it turned out. Um, we decided to do this kind of last minute. So we have a Craig jig here, a pretty vintage Craig jig, might I add. Yep. Um, pretty that's, sweet. That's actually made of real metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not plastic. I don't think you could find this anymore. But no. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be the corner miter of the lip where the platform is, where the bed's going to sit. And... We noticed that when we had it pre-assembled earlier that the miters weren't perfectly flush with each other. They weren't level. And so in order to pull them together and pull them level with each other, we're just going to go ahead and drill two pocket screws going opposite ways of each other. That way when we tighten them, it's going to pull everything nice and tight and lock it into place. You could, um, If you don't have a Craig jig, you could use two mending plates on the bottom. No one would ever see them. You could even use biscuits if you got a biscuit joiner, domino if you want to go crazy. Uh, but there's a lot of different options, dowels even, you could use. But that's just what we're going to do because we want the miters to look real nice when it's all finished. So let's go ahead and get these pocket screws, pocket holes drilled. We've got the step drill in there. Yep. That's a step drill. Boom. So that's the bottom view. So this screw will go in there, this screw will go in there. It'll pull that miter together and uh, we'll clamp it flush and that'll be good. Yep. And also, uh, we're gonna, we wanted to drill that just right before we stain right now. That way we can kind of stain into the pocket hole and it blends in a little more. But it's getting real windy, real chilly out here. Not the best staining environment. So we're actually gonna move the operation inside to a more controlled area. And uh, we're gonna continue in there. So let's get this thing moved, huh? All right, I got my Wheaties. <laughs> All right, guys, so we have the bed inside. It's a nice controlled, way warmer environment and we've got the fans going for good air circulation so that's going to allow us to finish this wood really nice. First we're going to start with the pre-stained wood conditioner by Varathane. Um, this stuff is essential. You absolutely need it in my opinion. It just turns the, fin the stain 
from you know kind of blotchy and and kind of beginner level to just like I mean it's gonna look incredible I've had great success with it over the years and I fully recommend this stuff and I always include it in my prog in my projects that I'm gonna be staining and then we decided to go with the Jacko Bean wood stain. It's a dark kind of uh, walnut, a little darker than walnut stain. But the beauty about pine and the beauty about this project is that you could do any color. You could paint it, stain it. You could even leave it, leave it pine. It doesn't matter. Whatever you guys want, it's up to you. We just decided to go with Jacko Bean. So that's our stain. And then we're going to finish it off with a water-based polyurethane coating. You guys can see it adds scratch resistance, durability, and it's got a fast dry time. We chose satin because we didn't want it to be super glossy. That's just the look that we wanted to go for. Um, I usually shoot for three coats of poly because in between coats you can sand it, get all the little bumps, ridges, mountains down that might come in from you know outside. So we're going to go ahead and buff that down and it's going to look absolutely um, awesome at the end. I'm super excited to show you guys the finishing process, but let's waste no more time. We got these foam brushes. This is what we're going to use to apply it with. I've had good, good success with these. I know some people might not like them, but I've never had a problem with them. So And they're cheap. So we're going to go ahead and just apply this pre-stained wood conditioner and let it soak in for about 30 minutes. Alright guys, so it's been about 30 minutes. We've let our pre-conditioner dry and soak into the wood and that's going to prevent the blotchiness and it's going to let our stain go down real nice and even. So we're just going to go ahead and start staining. I mean, there's no, no point in waiting. We got the disposable gloves on. It's a must have. This stuff will ruin anything that you wear. So make sure that you're not wearing clothes that uh, you care about or, and also make sure you're wearing some gloves. But let's see how this stuff lays down. Mmm. And you can see how it's just taking to the wood so much uh, better. That looks awesome. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kind of pick up the pace. Boom. That's quick. That's sweet. Alrighty guys, and there we go. The stain is on. And from what I'm seeing, we're probably gonna keep it with one coat. The stain was dark enough to really accentuate different grain patterns in the wood and it's not even done yet. I mean, we still have to put the coats of poly, which is gonna give it a beautiful satin finish, and it's just gonna really elevate this finish job. So we're gonna let the stain dry overnight because in my experience, letting the stain dry overnight is the best possible way for you to guarantee a good finish. Getting impatient, um, I struggle with patience myself. I just want the project done. I wanna sleep in this thing, you know, but we gotta let it dry overnight. We gotta let the stain just completely do its thing, and we'll come back tomorrow when it's all ready to go and apply three coats of poly, let that dry and we'll be completed. So you wanna make sure that when you're wiping it off, you don't have any drips. Oh man, it looks so good. So we'll see you guys tomorrow when it's time to apply the poly. All right guys, it is the next day and our stain has completely dried. Just to be safe, we gave it a full day and it looks and feels absolutely amazing. Uh, it's super smooth, which is exactly what we want. But now it's time to apply the water-based polyurethane. So we're gonna be using this stuff. It's gonna be uh, satin water-based poly. And we're gonna be applying three coats. That's just what I like to do. Sometimes if I'm feeling crazy, I'll go more, but three is gonna be good enough for this bed, especially since you're only gonna be seeing these lips right here. And then in between each coat, I'm gonna be using this 3M finishing pad just to rub it, scuff it up a little bit, get, it, get any high mountains, bumps, anything that's in the air that lands on the poly while it's drying, just it's gonna buff it off and it's gonna make it look super nice in the end. So let's go ahead, crack this poly open and start applying our first coat. Alright guys, so we just got our first coat of poly on, our first piece, and I just kind of wanted to show you the technique that I use with the foam brush, so you guys can see that it's kind of cloudy and milky on top of the wood, that's okay, that's how it goes down. So it's going to dry clear, but before it dries, we want to take our brush, there's a bunch of streaks, and I don't know if you can see it, but just kind of, it just got applied a little unevenly, so we're just going to take our foam brush, and we're just going to drag it in a straight line all the way down the board, and that's going to give us a nice, straight, and clean edge with the poly so it dries and it'll dry down flat. You kind of want like a 50-50 overlap on your previous pass. Okay? And you just want everything to be super consistent and this will save you a lot of time with using the pad at the very end and it'll give you a really nice result at the very end. And I can feel a lot of that excess being picked up by the brush. 
I mean, you can kind of already get an idea for how it's going to look when it's all done. But that's what I do. Um, I can already tell that that's going to make such a huge difference in the end result. But now we've got to finish the other two boards and the top frame. Let it dry for two hours. Hit it with two more coats using the pad in between. And uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like when we're all done. Alrighty guys, I just wanted to interrupt real quick before I show you the end result to kind of go over this pad. You can get these at any big box store pretty much and after your first coat of poly and in between coats, you're going to rub your hands on it and you're going to notice that it's not as smooth as when just the stain went down. That poly kind of creates a rough texture that's totally okay. We're not going to go too hard with this thing, but you're just going to give it a light, like I'm really not even pressing that hard. This is just to kind of scuff it up and smooth it out. That way on our next coat of poly that we apply, it's going to go down smoother and just give the whole thing a better finish look overall. And already doing that light pass with this finishing pad has made the board a lot smoother and it just completely eliminates any of that high texture that we want to completely eliminate. So you're just going to go ahead and run over the wood and that's really all we're going to be doing in between coats. It's that easy. All right guys, so it is the end of the day and we have our two by sixes completely finished. Three coats of water-based polyurethane with a uh, little pad, a little 3M finishing pad in between each coat. Also gave it a once over after the third coat was dry just to get it nice and smooth. And um, this thing looks absolutely incredible. Get in close to add so you guys can really see. Um, we did a satin base again and it just looks absolutely amazing. It brings out the grain of the wood. You guys can see the darker areas where the sap wood reacted with the stain and the lighter where the heart wood interacted with the stain. And it just gives it a totally unique look that we absolutely love. So now that these are dry and ready to be installed, we got to bring the frame and the pieces, we got to install them, bring it all in the bedroom, put the mattress on top and finish up with the project. So let's go get that installed right now. Hey, we got the bed in the bedroom and we're going to flip it up like this against that wall. And that way we can put our platform rails on it and screw it in from underneath. We didn't want to put them on yet because we didn't want them to get damaged as we moved it into the room. Right, let's tip this thing up. All right. With the legs. Nice. All right guys, so it's time to install the lip. I've got my screw on the drill here and I'm just gonna go ahead and get it pre-started in our existing hole. And then now that the screw is through, we're gonna line up the lip hole with the screw and it's just gonna follow the track pull it nice and close and um, we're just going to continue to do that all the way up i'm inside you guys can see i'm, in, I'm inside the pre-existing hole and it's just going to pull it nice and tight and now we're going to go ahead and screw off the ones in between we're going to leave the two at the top unscrewed because we want to get that miter joint up there perfectly tight with the pocket screws that we drilled earlier Alrighty guys, so now that we've got the bed back on the ground with the lips somewhat attached, remember we're missing screws right here and right here on the closest connections, but we're gonna go ahead and get these two and a half inch pocket screws with the square drive on the impact. And we're just gonna go ahead, remember we pre-drilled the pocket hole, so we're just gonna come in at an angle and pull the miter nice and tight so it looks awesome. All right guys, and you can see on this miter, that there's a really big gap right there. So that's why we left the screws off of this part so we can definitely get that adjustment. Yeah. The grain, that's crazy how the grain lines up like that, it just naturally. Looks. Oh man, it looks so good. But we're gonna go ahead and secure two pocket screws in there, get that thing pulled tight and it'll look amazing. So let's get these pocket screws in. Nice. Boom. Good job. Dang. All right, so you guys can see that that just, I mean, oh my God, I'm so pleased. It looks absolutely amazing. So now we gotta tip this thing back up against the wall, get those last couple of screws in, put the LED strip on, put the mattress on, and call it a- Go to bed. Yeah, and then go to bed in it. So let's flip this sucker up one last time. All right. So now that all the screws are in, we got this LED strip right here. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and secure it all along the base to give a nice glow effect when we lay it down. So let's just go ahead and put this RGB strip on real quick. Ooh. Oh my God, that looks sick.
guys, and there you have it. The floating platform bed is finally complete after a couple of days. Assembling the bed took one day, staining took a day, and applying the poly took about a day. And we assembled it, put the LEDs underneath, and uh, I couldn't be more thrilled with the final result. I mean, as you guys saw, this thing looks absolutely incredible. Uh, could not have asked for a better result, honestly. For $95 um, and an LED strip, it completely transforms the room and it just gets me excited to come into your in, into my space, right? So to the untrained eye, you would never guess that this is pine. It feels smooth, it feels absolutely amazing. The LEDs just add a perfect touch to it. And again, just couldn't be more excited. So thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We got a ton of projects on the way that we think you guys really enjoy. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.